Well, my name is Nevin Mueller and I'm the fiddle teacher at St. Michael Community School. What have I found to be the best part of the fiddle group? I think just seeing the kids come into the room and get excited for a chance to play some fiddle, to do something a little bit different, something that connects with their cultural backgrounds and uh, is hands-on. It's just fun to be able to do that, to get that experience. Awesome. Reclaiming and celebrating Métis culture at St. Michael's School. Yeah, so I'm a new person to St. Michael's School this year and immediately what I noticed is that the building itself has lots of things up on the wall celebrating Métis culture, promoting it as a safe space for Métis and Indigenous students to come and to really just thrive and feel like they belong there. Well, some good news about the Métis Fiddle Program is that we are still able to do our fiddling this year. So um, with the social distancing guidelines put into place, we are still able to play our fiddles as long as we're masked up and we are spread out in the room. Because this instrument doesn't require air to be blown through it to make it sound, that works in our favor right now. So Orange Shirt Day uh, for me is comes from Phyllis Jack from BC, who was sent off to residential school, and her mom had bought her a new orange shirt. And when she got there, it was taken from her. And so it might not seem huge to a lot of people, but it was probably one of the only gifts she got and was new, and new clothes were not great to get at that time and to go to residential school and it be taken away. It's, more, it's a symbol of all the things that people lost when they entered residential school. My mother-in-law was, was a residential school survivor and she just passed away a year ago, just over a year ago at 93 years old. And so she has so many descendants and her time in residential school was 13 years. So it's, uh, it, it has great meaning to us and why we, we honor survivors and descendants on one shirt day. And you know, it, it also happens with the 60s group. We have a, a Métis man who made contact with his birth mother after 50 some years. And she presented him with his baby sweater that she had kept all those years for him. So, I mean, it, there's, there's so much meaning to it and how it resonates through all of our communities. Well, the students today, you know, they're carrying on uh, knowledge of the residential school system and the 60s school. And so for them, it's a, it's a great learning opportunity and they get an opportunity to speak with survivors and descendants of, of both uh, residential school and 60s school. And so it's knowledge, and they'll transfer that knowledge to um, their families, their children, and those to come. And it's important that we all know uh, these pieces uh, in history. We work towards uh, you know, uh, diversity and learning, and it all becomes a part of it. Well, definitely Absolutely. it's about reconciliation, which is uh, you know, knowledge of the residential school and the 60s scoop and, and how we're working towards to change and, you know, fulfilling the calls to action. That's huge. Well, it's language. Yeah. It's it, Michif is Métis language. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're, we're losing uh, lots of our strong Michif speakers. So they have the opportunity to be able to uh, have a bilingual school like St. Michael's in Westmount. Uh, so that the children can go and from kindergarten they're learning language that that's how we're going to carry on and so it's really important that our language is taught in the schools. Métis beliefs yeah. is you know for me it's it's a part of how we were raised um, knowledge of our land knowledge of our culture and where we came from uh, how we connect to mother earth it's it's how we how we are as people you know it, it's there was a time i mean the metis are known as the forgotten people where we weren't accepted by our non-indigenous side and we weren't accepted by our first nation side so it's growth and we're all learning to grow together and, and work together so i mean it's uh, our cultural values 
that we teach our children and, and grandchildren. So it's, those are values that, uh, that we all need to be able to carry on with. And I mean, when you look at, um, like diversity is, is my call to action. Because I really believe that that's what, that's what we need for uh, our children to be able to work and go to school and, and to, to grow, you know, in diversity. Because that's how our future is. And I think it's a big part of, you know, preventing racism when uh, we can talk diversity and when we're welcoming to all uh, cultures and colors of people. The fiddle program at St. Mike's is, is uh, it's fantastic. Like it really is. And I mean, Métis people are known for their fiddle music and the Red River Jig and all of these dances. And and so to for the kids to be at St. Mike's to be having the opportunity to learn to play the fiddle. So now they have language, they're learning to play the fiddle. There's cultural uh, programming in every classroom. There's language in every classroom. And for them to have that opportunity to, to learn. And then when they graduate from St. Michael's, they can go to Edifia and continue on with the, the fiddle playing. And there's some good fiddle players at, at St. Mike's. And what I love about it, it's, it's not cultural. You know, it's, um, it's a program to learn about Métis people and, and the fiddle and language, but it's open to everyone. And that's how things should be. There should be nothing specific. It should give people the opportunity. There's lots, you know, there's children that, um, that aren't Métis that are learning the Michif language, which is what we want, because that's gonna grow uh, knowledge of our culture. So it's a part of growing. And for, for the kids to be able to have that opportunity, uh, I mean, it's it's an instrument that you're learning to play. It's cost-free. You know, there's great community support for it. I know when we have a function, uh, St. Michael Fiddle Players come out and, uh, and they play for all of our gatherings and, and they do that in the community. So it gives the community knowledge of what's happening in the, in the schools. And I mean, that's where the majority of children are learning is when they're in school. So it's a, it's great for them and it's great for, definitely great for the community. Absolutely. Well, reclaiming Métis culture and language at our school is alive and present at St. Michael Community School. Not only do we have we are we reclaiming our language with the Michif language, we have a core Michif program, and we also have a bilingual kindergarten Michif program where we have a language keeper there. Um, when you walk into our school, you know it's different right off the bat. Um, Métis. Content and perspectives are primary right there as soon as you come in. We celebrate our Métis leaders, our Michif language, um, our elders are Métis, our staff, a majority of our staff are Métis, where we're able to celebrate our culture with pride and create a space at St. Michael Community School where all Indigenous students can thrive and celebrate our own identity. Well, we have a lot of great news about Métis perspectives in our school. In fact, last year, our while we were on distance learning, we had some good news. Uh, John Krasinski did some good news Métis style, and we did that within our school. We celebrate our students and all of their accomplishments. We're so proud of them in getting um, not only the language and culture within their classroom, but also within music. They're able to celebrate Métis fiddling, and we have a, the one and only full Métis fiddling program that's going on in Saskatoon right now in our elementary school. So we're really proud of our fiddlers. We're really proud of our jiggers who bring the Métis culture to life.